Welcome to the Valentine's special of Wolfwood Weekly. Now remember, if someone gives you flowers and you put it in a vase, don't slip on the water, because it could have a bad outcome. They could fall on the floor. And then you could fall on a knife. And then you could be dead. <laughs> Through the heart on Valentine's Day. Struck by the heart! Bon Jovi would be proud as punch that that happened mm. on Valentine's Day. That was a um, shock ending. Shock in the heart, yeah. yeah. Mm. My heart was actually racing, I was like, oh, this is quite good. I ood. Yeah. And, and I... we saw Dot's bathroom. Yeah, first it was time. Lovely green. Maybe um Mel designed it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Favourite shade. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's um that's we're the end of that. <laughs> to believe that that's the end of Leo. So mm, but there's there's so much I I'm hoping that's not the big character that's going to die. <laughs> no, no, that's next week. This is just pre pre death. Oh yeah, all right. Pre- I think there's a death the week after as well, three deaths in a row. Really? So I'm led to believe, but I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> that's a shaky ground. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so that was, um, I was very shocked by that ending. Unexpected, because we thought that like, next week was going to be the big week. Mm. And then this week ended up being the big one too. It did have shades of Ray though. Do you remember when Ray, we all thought Ray was dead and then he oh, rose yeah. from the ground. They keep doing that. Yeah. And um, also with Alfie as well. <laughs> um, so EastEnders do the I'm dead, oh no wait, I'm not dead, now I'm dead. Mm. So yeah, it's fine. But, but, he's, he's... but he's had a heart. Anyway, we'll talk about Leo we and Whitney. But it was later. shocking and... Yeah, very good. But I just want to—I just want to make sure everyone out there had a nice Valentine's Day. They got everything loved up and what they wanted, and all those. Well, who everyone were, does. But I was about to say, all those who are single, don't you worry, because you've got Ben and I to love to love you. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll embrace you. You're one of us now. You're I like, don't agree with Valentine's Day, so I don't care. I know you don't. You're very opposed to it. Money grabbing government. The, the government have nothing <laughs> to do with it. The government didn't create. Sorry, love. commercial arms of people mm. want to make money. So it's all a load of rubbish. Always just reminds me of, um, and as all my stories begin, of an episode of The Simpsons when uh, their ch- corporates are trying to think of a new day and they mm. create Love Day. That's true. Happy Love Day, everybody. <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about extenders because that's what we're here to do. Yes. And you are. Who? Oh, sorry. Are we, we doing keep, it yeah, this we week? Keep forgetting doing this week? No, we've only forgotten once, and that was last week. And but this week you've forgotten to say your episode number. You I'll said do that in a st- minute. Oh, the episode number. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a bit weird, so I just stopped doing it. No. One hundred and four, I think. <laughs> you don't even know what episode no, we're on. I, don't know. I am Alex, and I am the co-host <laughs> and That's the right. main contributor, as I am the only contributor <laughs> to. The host, who is? Mm. I'm Ben. Yes. And I'm discussing episodes between the 10th and the 14th of February, 2020. Well done. I forgot that last week as well. You forgot forgot a lot. We just went straight into it. We started talking about EastEnders. (laughs) We were so excited and we had so much to cover. Mm. We just didn't have time to do the fundamentals at the beginning. That's right. So we're going to go on to our roundup now, where we're going to start off with the Carters. Yeehaw. Where, um... I just, every week it's just Linda getting drunk. So like, there's not much to say, but she's getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, we said this last week, but it feels very final. Mm. No love lost between them. It's all been, the divorce papers were last week and it's signed, like Linda hasn't changed her mind when she's sober. She's still going with this. Mm, she, in fact, she's almost worse when she's sober now. Mm. She's um, convinced, She's par- her paranoia is getting worse and worse and she's convinced that Mick has for a long time been trying to build up a case against her. But Mick this week tells her, nope, this, the fr- I literally have gone to look for a solicitor for the first time this week. Great. And, great, of course, not a family lawyer. <laughs> Has to keep telling everyone that. <laughs> he, should, he needs a T-shirt printed. That's what Chantel. Chantel wants to do something useful to get Grey off her back. Get a T-shirt printed to say, "I'm Grey." If she get Whitney to I'm do not it, but Whitney's solicitor. busy. So, well, Whitney, no, Whitney, Whitney will do, can't design. Whitney can design. She's got a sewing machine in the corner of her, <laughs> of her room, and uh, all those reels of cotton. Mm. So she could easily make a T-shirt. She could just split, spin one off. But for the meantime, just go to a shirt making website. And just have, I'm grey, I'm not a family solicitor. Yeah, it would help. Mm. It just, just just so everyone knows. So if any more divorces happen, then <laughs> Sharon, they know. Sharon needs a divorce soon. Not a family solicitor. No, don't ask grey. Grey has a friend. Just one. Richie. Grey only knows one. <laughs> yeah. No, grey. Richie Scott. <laughs> Richie, not a family solicitor. <laughs> I mean, every, all Grey knows is this one family solicitor, and she's already used that card already, giving it to Linda. Mm. So now Mick has to go and look for oh one. No, poor Mick. It's not like he can't Google it or something, is it? But um, the cards are all ganging up on Linda still. Like, but are they though? Is it? Is it? Is it that they're ganging up on her, or are they trying for her benefit of her welfare? Because that's what Linda thinks. But if they are, but they're not doing a very good job. 
But no, because but it's easy to say that watching it. But I guess in the Tina's family, Tina's being quite sympathetic. I think Tina's mm, taking a step back. Spare part, not spare part at all. I yeah, disagree. I strongly disagree. Tin- Tina is in the middle, and she's kind of refereeing it between Mick and Linda. Shirley has clearly taken Mick's side on this. Yeah, mum. Yeah, of course. But but I think Shirley's approach of trying to get Linda on side is shout loudly and and hope that she listens if suddenly drums mm. into her well, head. Shirley's weird like she shouts at her like puts her in a the shower then like the next episode she's hugging her outside AA and then the next episode she's shouting at her again and telling her to naff off while the police are questioning her yeah it's like God, it's like she's oh, bipolar. Well, that, was really odd. that was a really strange scene, wasn't it? Because the oh, police casually, are... the police in the background. <laughs> yeah, she had, oh, by the way, the police are here. They're not here to talk to you yet. <laughs> See you later, Linda. Yeah, while they're talking to her. It's yeah. Like, get off your high horse, I know, Shirley. Like, you're, they are actually talking to you, Shirley. <laughs> and the fact that the, the, um, the police were in the background just kind of watching and being like, that's right. Mm. They were like a step away from putting a club in their hands, just <laughs> whacking their their palm every now and then. Just to go, that was odd. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Lin- um, Shirley was not really in the right place or... or or position to really judge Linda uh, at that point. Mm, but it's interesting whether because this whole ep- all of Friday's episode, everything was leading up to the big week next week, which is all set on the same day. What's happening next week? It's fer- it's Valentine's Day all week next week. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Are they on a are they on a ferry on the Thames? They are they're on a boat. Yeah. And um, like lots of things were being planted. Like mm. Ollie is staying at Grey and Chantel's. Is that going to be some sort of? Sub storyline. Oh, what? So like something Grain happens Chantel. with Grand Chantel and Ollie watches. Yeah. Poor Ollie. <laughs> I know. He's watching his own family fall apart, and now he's been introduced to another family <laughs> where an abusive relationship is taking place. Mm. No wonder Ollie is, you know, the social workers are looking very closely on Ollie. And the Carters are like, they're attending the boat party because they've won Pub of the Year. Well, they should. It was their party to begin with. But they both had this big falling out because she had that public argument in front of all the extras. Where she told them all about their dirty laundry for the past six years. More than extras, Ben. It was Denise. It was Jack. Yeah. It was Grey, kind of Chantel, Ruby. Yeah, yeah. Shrimpy, Tracy, Winston were all watching. Yeah. But it again, was those party. three for me are more than extras. Come on. We talk <laughs> enough about Shrimpy. Shrimpy's a fan. You haven't seen much of Shrimpy recently. Maybe he's on the boat. We know that uh, Tracy's on the boat. Mm. But no, none of the, as you're now calling them, extras. I'm not sure. <laughs> Denise. There's no... <laughs> There's no small roles in EastEnders. Not anymore. No. Everyone has a piece of the pie. But um, yeah, they're just keeping off appearances for their big win. Mm. But I'm guessing they're doing this and then are they selling the Vicks still? Is that still happening? Well, I don't suppose Mick has a reason to anymore unless he has to pay for his solicitor bills. Mm. It's, it's weird that Linda set up a, her own bank account and she already has like £300 deposited <laughs> in it. And yet she, there's no kind of signal of how she's earning this money. No, it's just taking it from the joint account. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but no, she can't, can she? Because he's blocked her from oh, the joint yeah. account. That's what I mean. So unless she's taking a wage somewhere from the pub, I don't know. Mm. It's really confusing how she's opened this account. And she's, she looks so pleased for herself as well. <laughs> she turned to me like, that's right. I've got a bank account. Maybe Aunt Babe's secret account. Oh, yeah. Maybe she's asked Aunt Babe for some help. Linda's blackmailing someone. But um, they had a little chat where Mick was like, he wasn't sure if he didn't love her anymore. Or wasn't sure if divorce was the only option. Well, he wanted to hear it from Linda, mm. the woman he fell in love with. They were drinking with. around. Not, not drunk Linda. Well, she had a drink in her hand. How many had she had? That's true. That's true. But, but... The Lin- hair wasn't falling out. But Mick, Mick... No. But Mick was seeing that, like, Linda... Drunk Linda and the Linda she's fallen in love with has now combined into one and there is no real distinct difference between them anymore. Mm. That, is, that is now Linda's personality and that's this really bad alcoholic. Yeah, it's interesting. I was reading on let's say online because I can't remember where it was from but someone made a point of how interesting it was like comparing the Angie storyline to this one to Mm. the Linda one and um, how it was interesting that Linda's is so public whereas Angie at the Vic she always used to keep up appearances in the Vic Mm. and then she would break down behind the scenes but people always knew though yeah but it was never like like the way that Linda she's done what like three public announcements on a microphone about her family and wetting like when she wet herself and when she fell over yeah and it's all so public and someone pointed out online somewhere like it's quite interesting how Angie's was like I'm the landlady and then behind the scenes she was breaking down and drinking wine but on, mm. with Linda at the side she's just doing everything public and airing everything and mm. it's interesting like, I wonder why they've done that I suppose one reason could be that Den Angie with Angie was that Den was doing all those things that Angie suspected him of doing. Mm. So he was fraternizing with other women. He was, you know, Dirty Den. He was Dirty Den. He was doing, you know, he he was doing secret deals and getting into trouble without Angie knowing and deliberately kept it from her. Mm-hmm. Um and almost deliberately kept her as a sideline in his life. 
And then there's well, Mick, who's, who's Mousy Mick. Mousy Mick, who's much more <laughs> who's much more honest with Linda and actually isn't really doing anything no, bad to cares. Linda. He actually cares for her. He does care for her. And I think it's her, for Linda's defence mechanism is that basically is to break him down, mm, perhaps. Publicly humiliate him. Yeah, because that's what he said, isn't it? He said, uh, your brother raped me. And when Ollie was sick and needed his help, he had a panic attack in the cellar. Mm. And there was like and an order. was terrorising everyone. You didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. And then when I helped you, you then thought, I betrayed you, mm. you know. So yeah, Linda is tearing Mick apart bit by bit. And uh interestingly, it's almost like Linda is the den character mm. and Mick Plus that and, <laughs> and well yeah, with, with the them. alcoholism and Mick is the is the kind of innocent what party. Sharon. Teenage but, Sharon. Yeah, Mick is teenage or Rolly. Sharon. Rolly the dog. <laughs> He'd fit Innocent. in a nice white tight perm, yeah, wouldn't he? Yeah. He should have his nose extended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's call him mm. Rolly. Mick is Rolly in this d- dilemma. A little bit of Sharon though. So moving on to the youths of EastEnders. Yeah, it was the like new a, youth. It's like a youth club. Classic Grin Habiba. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of out of place out there around them, but it's fine. Honourable youth. They're, they're the young. mothers. They're in their early twenties, aren't they? Yeah, but like the Bobby's mothers. like 16, 17. I don't know. Well, no, he must be he's eight. young. Oh, Seven, he's the same as Tiff, isn't he? Oh, is he? Yeah, and then Bex and Dottie are like a year older. And then Ikra's like, what, 30? <laughs> <laughs> but Ikra's the mother hen. Ikra's not 30, is she? No, I don't know. She's quite old, isn't she? Not She's that... older than Bobby and everyone else. But that's not the point. I enjoyed seeing them all together. Yeah, but they've got a good group going It on. was a nice group. It's a nice club. Hmm. And it was nice that it was like Bobby, Dottie and Bex. It's like children of the originals. Yeah. Which is cool. That's a true. A child of Nick, a child of Ian's and a child of um, Martin's. <laughs> you have to think about that. <laughs> Did I think? Is he original? But he is an original. He's an original, technically. Well, he was with Pauline. He was inside Pauline <laughs> when Pauline was on the very in first episode. episode. One, yeah. Exactly. Because that's so when she OG. visited Dr. Leg. Yes. Um, so that's quite cool. Like the offspring of originals are all like mm. friends. Mm. So that's fun. And Which... isn't it interesting how um, quick Bex becomes addicted to things? <laughs> I know. And normally tablets. <laughs> normally it's studying to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Guitar. Nice things to be addicted to. Life. She was addicted to life. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's these pills to help her study. Ecstasy. And she tries to take her own life by ODing. And then now she's got these coloured pills from Dottie and she's wanting them two days in a row. Their ecstasy. Yeah. The first lot were caffeine. They were. Well, what do you mean when she was studying? Yes. Because yes. I, I, I thought you were heading there straight away. No, no, no. Those pills were quite colourful. They were like Skittles. Mm. They looked like the ones Bobby had before when he had that funny thing in the garden. Well, when he saw Rainy. Yeah. When he was handing him the box. He's like, here you go, Bobby. But yeah, that's an interesting new storyline for Bex. Well, not really. It's not new, is it? Like you said, she's addicted to something new. <laughs> What's it this week? Yeah, she's taken it on a boat. Well, they could just be those... What they called st- st- storage or something like that. Those pills you take before you travel on a train or a car. Oh, for seasickness. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if that's all they are? It's like Bex has been fooled mm. and she's just like psychologically... And Dottie's like going... To t- telling everyone in the club is like, all they are is like sugar pills. <laughs> And there's Bex just spinning around in circles, mm. thinking high on life. I mean, obviously that spells trouble if you're around cold water. We saw Ronnie, um, not Ronnie, Roxy, that's how Roxy ended her life, by jumping in the cold water on drugs, and then she shot, had a shock to what, the system. What, is that what happened? Yeah, that's why she drowned. What, because she, but that couldn't have been cold water, that swimming pool would have been warm. This is 2017. <laughs> what, they didn't warm swimming pools then? <laughs> well, East End's writers didn't. But they, they could afford it, because they but had you to know, get one of those special Thames, spin cans. Thames is very cold, so... Well, you're talking over me, are we? <laughs> The Thames is very cold. Right. So, you know, if she goes in, she might have a heart attack. Well... They're leading to that. I guess that's true. But then you could argue that with alcohol, too. You shouldn't drink alcohol, because that makes you Linda. cold. Linda. Yeah, that's it. Well, most of the people on that boat is going to be drowning, then. Big Mo. <laughs> yeah. No, Big Mo bit... will float. Big Mo... Big Mo will find... No, no Big Mo. She'll be like Rose in Titanic, and she'll <laughs> find, like, that one piece of wood. Won't take it all. Yeah, and take it all, and won't let anyone else use it. You can have a bit for a fiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us a whistle, I'll blow it. But, um, yeah, Naughty Dotty getting our innocent Bex into trouble. Well, Dotty originally had planned to get Bobby in trouble by you having the pills. Which because well, she offered to him first, didn't mm, she? Which begs then the question, who was it that posted that social media post? Oh, yes. Was it Dotty mm. with the plan to then get Bobby hooked on drugs to further his guilt and uh, make... His, tarnish his name further, or was it Dennis, who's jealous because when <laughs> Dotty was invited out, you mm. can see his little face that he wasn't invited to. Mm. And also, like she, Bobby made a funny joke about undressing her, and yeah, he I, was like, "Oh, like hate you, Bobby." I see you out those overalls. <laughs> and Bobby, and they've all said how Bobby clearly fancies Dotty mm. as well. 
So do you think Dottie's that manipulative that it might... What was... Well, there was like a username of the per, of the fake person, wasn't it? Like D or something, or beginning with D. No, and I everyone thinks it could be Dottie or could be Dennis, I guess. <laughs> Be anyone with the letter D is their name. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Would Dottie do that? It's quite. What is she trying to do? Like humiliate Bobby because he fancies her? Do you think? Well, because Do- well, maybe. But then Dennis fancies Dottie too because that was also humiliating. <laughs> yeah. So what's her plan to do with Dennis then? If it was Dottie, blame it on Dennis. Mm, I think the obvious thing is is Dennis. But yeah, it then... must be. But then if it's so obvious, then it'd be nice if it then to actually be a surprise twi- mm. twist. Maybe it's Dot. Maybe it's Dot Cotton. <laughs> Maybe she's she's had enough of all this ethnic mm. <laughs> ethnic grouping in the in the, the square, and she's just like, no, I've had enough. Yeah, posting it from Ireland. Yeah, too many years. Well, she threw a brick. She's got an arm on her as Dot. <laughs> oh yeah, that was silly when the brick went through the window. Single pane glass. I think. Well, do you? I think that brick would have pretty much gone through most standard glass. Mm. But it's it's the fact that like old Bobby was. Saying, you know, I'm, I don't care, I don't care, this is just stupid, mindless idiots just trying to spread muck. And it seems to be everyone else's problem that this is happening. And everyone's like, well, you, you really should care about this, Bobby. And at first, Bobby really didn't care. And now, because everyone's kind of convinced him that he should care, he's now caring about it. And, you know, Bex piped up and said, like, I've been bullied. <laughs> and so, and, but no one seemed to care. It's like, just shut like, up, Bex. yeah, shut up, Bex. <laughs> Go take a pill. But... In the, do you know what I mean, though? It's like everyone just doesn't seem to... Bobby didn't care, but now everyone wants him to care. He, it's all, he almost feels obliged to care. I think he did care. I think it's just that everything's, everything's new to Bobby, isn't it? Mm. And he's such like a... He's relearning the world again, yeah, I guess. Yeah. He's such like a non-confident person. It's like when they all said, oh, let's go out. Mm. And he was like, and they said, oh, let's go to a club. And he was like, oh, we could, but I don't drink. Mm. And it's like, but Ikra and Habiba don't drink. But they were, they were confident enough to say, oh, yeah, let's go to the yeah, club. But they're much older, as you pointed out at the beginning oh, of the yeah, section. Oh, yeah, exactly. So they've got so, more experience. So yeah. he's just, he's learning everything new again, isn't mm. he? Because mm. he had a lot of his time when he was growing up in um, custody, in prison or whatever he was. So he's missed out on a lot of this. Mm. And the first one he's gone to is Dottie, who's giving him colourful pills. Yeah, which he refused. You have to give him that much, mm. you know, some credit for. He doesn't push into peer pressure. But he did. And Unlike that's why Bex. he won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. But well, no, Bex just wants to have a good time. Yeah. I mean, Bex hasn't really had a great lead up to this point either. So I suppose Bex, and she did say to her dad, didn't she? She said, uh, you know, I've moved out because I want to enjoy my life. Mm. I've not really had a chance to enjoy it. And this is the first time I am. And um, so you can't really blame Bex in a funny way because no. she has literally spent her whole time being depressed. De- being depressed. Yeah, <laughs> just being depressed and then studying and really hard. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting that one of her friends, you know, Louise, her other friend is gone. But her other friend on Instagram where she saw that thing about Bobby, he's on a gap year. Mm. And when that popped up, I was like, oh, OK, gap year. Is Bex going to suddenly want to um go on a gap year and then that'll be Bex? I'm in Thailand and take yeah. more drugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's her plan. Bex, the YouTube series on BBC. Oh, no, don't do that. Travelling. Oh. <laughs> Travelling with Bex. Travelling with Bex. Backpacking with Bex. <laughs> back, back, oh, no. <laughs> Bex packing. Bex track. Tracking. Ba- back, back track. <laughs> Bex track. See, they could do it. It writes itself. Yeah, I thought, like, why have they added that little line in there so i wonder who that's going to be her mm. her exit story maybe ian of course is showing his political needs to stay good well to be fair ian was pushed into a corner by kathy because mm. other than saying well, perhaps you should you know build some bridges with your son kathy threatened him and said if you don't <laughs> i'm going to the tabloid press about you and it's like wow it's right, like kathy. Kath, i know she just loves threats doesn't she that's kathy's way now it's just mm. like well if you empty do, threats yeah no, we're not. Are they empty? She put, don't forget she put those drugs on Rainy's table. Oh, yeah, and um, dobbed Bobby's friend in. Yes, yes. For again, <laughs> she's so hateful, isn't she? Remember mm. a few weeks back we questioned whether Kathy voted Brexit or not, mm. and because there's evidence to prove that she probably <laughs> did. I'm strongly believing that she probably did. Yeah, even though she didn't really understand it. Wait, did, no, because she'll claim she did. <laughs> She knew exactly what she was voting mm. for. But um, Ian, in an Ian way, tried to be a good dad to Bobby and ask him how he was about this online bullying. But mm. Bobby was like, nah, well, Bobby, you're in it for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Bobby instantly thought. And then again, it was after Ian had spoken to him when he started being wound up by the whole situation. So again, Ian has somehow subliminally upset Bobby once more. So I don't. I think the... Uh, it's gonna take it's gonna take a it's gonna take a boat ride, I think, to <laughs> mend some bridges between Bobby and Ian. Yes. 
more more set up for um <laughs> next week's big day because it's only you know end of friday it was only 2 p.m mm. we've got the whole night to go for a whole an week art, an evening yeah. and a night I crazy mean, this is going to be a big one and also before we um, move on to our game i just wanted to say habiba she had her one line of the week oh what was it something about a club i oh, can't okay. remember <laughs> she was like folding towels in the background of all the young people i noticed that every scene <laughs> every scene that they had habiba was there but always like this, this busy work <laughs> yeah yeah doing something shadowy in the background but yeah she had like three words i think this week so mm-hmm. you know that's her that's her quota perhaps we should um start recording her line each week and just playing it and having a section yeah mixed in with R- ruby every now and then because she's a bit like a beaver at the moment, oh yeah ruby she? popped in didn't she pops in like, pops out what's happened with whitney and then yeah she and just does a face and then walked off yeah yeah they, well to be fair cat just then stopped talking to her <laughs> she was like oh yeah something's happened so anyway Chris, shut, ruby. Going, <laughs> yeah, shut up ruby um if anyone can think of a cool section name for when we play habiba's one line let us know yeah it has a rhyme with habiba which there's a lot of things that can have rhyme with that habiba howling that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Habiba howling. Lots of things rhyme with Habiba. Habiba howling. No, but like, not rhyme, so it rolls off the tongue. Habiba howling. Howling Habiba. I bet she rolled off Adam's tongue a few times. She wasn't even there for his exit, so... <laughs> What so, does that say? So let us know. Get in touch. WolfordWeekly.com. All the details there. <laughs> right, so we're going to go on to our first game now, which I think is your game. Oh, get ready for some connections. Mm, very stressful. Dot's got some dots to connect. Should <laughs> <laughs> like... I put on her glasses then? <laughs> Turn the radiators on. Why she doesn't drive the wrong way down the motorway? Yeah, it's Dot Cotton's connection game. Oh joy! Yay! Um, so anyone who's ever watched in the UK the show Only Connect. Oh, you're admitting that now, are you? Normally you pretend it's a unique format. It's loosely based on that game. Only Connect. And any familiarity is purely coincidental Mm -hmm. but if you have watched it then you probably get an idea of what this game's about basically ben i will give you up to three clues and you must find the sequence of what the fourth clue should be so you have to work out the fourth clue in the sequence and what the sequence is if you get it after one clue you get four points Mm -hmm. two clues you get two points all three clues you get a point but if you also get the sequence you get an additional (laughs) point which means you can you can track the points eh you can track the points for me then yeah, I will. Good. That means you can get a total of 20 points. Ooh. 20 big ones. So, um... 20 of Martin's bananas. Oh, yeah. Not this, <laughs> not Keanu's grapes. <laughs> Raisins, no. No. They're used. So, uh, here's the first one. You ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. excited? Yeah. You're on the edge of your seat? Yeah. Let's do this. Um, and let us know how you guys get along at home. So, here we go. Clue number one. Bex Martin 2000. <laughs> Silence. Bex Martin 2000. Mm. They appeared... No. Do you, want, do you want another clue? <laughs> yes. Okay. Lily, Ryan, 2010. Oh, the dads that were born. The dads that were born? <laughs> the dads and their child were born and the year they were born. Right. So it must be by Stacey. No. Yeah. Can't be by Stacey. I don't know. I can't I can't give you the answer. <laughs> um, do you want the third and final clue? Stacey Hope. I don't know what that means. And the year 2013. <laughs> No, wildly out. Do you want to give you a third clue? Okay. Arthur Cush, 2015. <laughs> so it's it's obviously a child. Yeah, I know that. The father of the child yeah. and the year they were born. Yes. So you got the first part, Hope. Yeah, well, how are they linked? You're not going to get it, are you? Is this a big fat zero for Ben? You well, can't even Bex, get the links. Well, I, I, I thought it was because they're all Stacey's kids, but Bex isn't Stacey's kid. Mm, it's a stepchild, isn't she? Hardly. Which she is. Okay, well, it's Hope. <laughs> Yeah. Martin. Yeah. 2013. No, it can't be before Arthur. Hope's younger, isn't she? No, Hope's... Yeah, Hope's the youngest. Oh, 25th, yeah. Time goes forward, Ben, not backwards. I can't remember all these babies. (laughs) The Bex one was ridiculous on that, so that doesn't count. The the, the one you shouldn't have got is... You should have got is Hope Martin 2017. That's what I said. And it's the stepchildren (laughs) and children of Stacey Fowler. Oh, yeah. Well, the Bex one, that's stupid. So Bex is the first one. Lily, Arthur, Hope. No, that's silly. Don't agree. You got zero. Bex doesn't count. I'll give you one. I'll give you one for knowing it's Stacy. <laughs> Thanks. It's and I said hope. Okay, you get point three of a point because you didn't <laughs> give me the rest of it. So you're, at the moment, out of four, you're uh, out of five. You're on one point three. Okay. <laughs> Good. It's just strong. It's a it's a positive. Well, that Bex one's silly. Right. Okay, next number two. Okay, here we go. Clue number one. Tanya Branning. Yeah. That's it. So it's women that Max is bedded or something. Oh. Um, maybe. Blonde women, maybe. Fee Browning. No, that's not the final clue. Rainy. Do you want, no, do you want clue number two? <laughs> Ingrid. 
No. Yeah, okay, clue think about two. Think about the kind of character Max is. That's my clue I'm going to give you. Number two, Gemma Claus, or Clues. Gemma? Mm. Uh, Karen, someone. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Masked Singer. Um, yeah. I don't know. I hate Max Branning. Yeah, but what, what's, what's Max Branning pretty much... Oh, people who's cheated on, maybe. Right. Stacy. So these are... <laughs> no. Stacy's the third clue. So his third clue is Stacy Slater. Rainy. No. We cheated on Rainy. Yeah, but that's... Fee Brown. He didn't no, he hasn't cheated on Rainey. Oh, the French woman. No. Oh. <laughs> these okay, okay, I'll tell you what the the, the actual sequence is, and right. then you see if you can get the fourth one. So these are all people Max has had affairs with mm. whilst married. Starting from the very first one. Right. So Tan he's had his first affair with Tanya when he was married to Rachel Branning. Right. Second was with Gemma Claus when he was married to Tanya. Third one was Stacy Slater when he was married to Tanya. Mm-hmm. So the fourth one is you married Rainey. No, Rainey. Rainey's far, far, far <laughs> well, into the future. I don't know. I hate Max Branning. Who what if I told you that? What with? if I told Roxy, Ronnie? It's the one before Roxy and Ronnie. So Roxy and Ronnie would have been fifth Sharon. in the sequence. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sam. No. <laughs> so what if I told you that for the Tanya. fourth? Cl- yes, <laughs> Tanya Branning. He yes, slept I with Tanya Branning that. when he was married to Vanessa Gold. Oh yeah, who's that's played by in the your favourite Zoe Lacker. Zoe Lacker. Yeah. I don't like the branding. You got it. You got Tanya. So one point. <laughs> Two point three out of ten. Okay. That's ridiculous. Right, next sequence. Are you excited? How many is there? There's four. Oh, oh so I'm over halfway. Yeah. <laughs> Good. There's <laughs> a relief in your voice. Here's the next one. You ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. Leo King, 2020. You like this one. This is one you'll get. People that Whitney slept with? No. Oh. <laughs> Although that's okay, that's a fair enough guess. Whitney's boyfriends. No. Relationship. No, it's not Whitney, if that oh. helps. Children of people who are in prison. <laughs> you're, no. Children you're, of villains. No, you're close but not quite. Oh, I don't know. Um, Another clue? Yeah. Okay. Tom Bailey, 2017. Tom Bailey? Tom Bailey. I'm going to give you a, a hint. Who's Tom Bailey? Tom Bailey was someone who a character met on a tube train. What, Michelle? Ah. Oh, stalkers! Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Sarah Khan's <laughs> correct. You got it right after two Martin clues. Stalker. You got two points there out Good. of two clues. So I'll give you the sequence. The first one's Leo King, twenty twenty. Mm, stalk Whitney. Tom Bailey stalked Michelle in twenty seventeen. That's right. Gemma Claus, she's back again. She stalked Max Branning in two thousand and six. Mm. And so the fourth in the sequence was Sarah Khan's, who stalked Martin. In 2004. That's correct. There were stalkers starting from the most recent. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So who'd have thought there'd be so many, so much stalking on the square? Mm. Are you ready for the last one? Yes, I am. This is this is this is doable. Just think logically. Okay. <laughs> and it, and it, okay. So number one, Mel Healy, 31st of December 1999. This is all the surnames that Mel's had. No. Oh. <laughs> all the times Mel's. Again, it's got nothing to do with Mel. Oh. You're thinking too narrowly. Think of Mel. Mel who, what was Mel doing in 1999? Working in the supermarket. Okay, shall I give you another clue? <laughs> yeah. Laura Dunn, 10th of May, 2001. Right, this is Ian Bill's wives then. Yes. So the last one will be Jane Bill. Yeah. That's not the complete answer. You're halfway there. 2000 and... No, I want the date. 19th of February, 2015. And why is it 19th of February? Because it's the anniversary. It's live there week. There you go. You got it absolutely right. That's the second again. marriage to Jane as well. You're correct. I was about to say. So the sequence is Mel Healy, 31st of September, 1999. Laura Dunn, 10th of May, 2001. Mm-hmm. Jane Collins. That was her before she married Ian. Yeah, when she had her old husband. Yeah, she worked at the fairground. Ian saved her from the... Helter Skelter collapsing <laughs> on her collapsing on her head. Fifth oh, yes. of July two thousand and seven. Jane Bill, nineteenth of February two thousand fifteen. Their maiden names are the wives of Ian Bill and the date of their marriage. And of course, if we were going to go further back and start, it would have been Cindy Williams and they married on the twelfth of October nineteen eighty nine. Mm. But we started from Mel Healy. Kathy came back for the male wedding for a few episodes with a short haircut. That's nice of her. Well, back from South Africa. Mm. She said, "I love coming back to this show." <laughs> and then they killed her off. <laughs> 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 and then went to Hollyoaks <laughs> and then was reborn. Um, so, well, so, so out of 20, yeah. you got 6.3. <laughs> 6.3 out of 20. That's a stressful game. Yeah, but you, once you get into the flow of it, you no. always miss up the first one. The, the second one, you give it a bit more thought. <laughs> and then by the third and third fourth one... Third one's too difficult, and then the fourth one... The third one, you got three points on. Oh, okay. And then I the, can't remember. The fourth, the fourth one, you got three points on as well. <sighs> There you go. So well done. Um, anyone has got any connections they'd like to send in, please do. You can send it to us on our Twitter or Instagram or our email. All the details on WolfordWeekly.com. Um, and I'll make sure Ben doesn't see them. We can have another another fun game of Doc Cotton's connection game.
the more I play that game, the less it makes sense. It makes good sense. It makes more sense than this blooming story we're about to talk about. <sighs> I've li- I've just reread the notes mm-hmm. and I'm still confused to what the hell is going on. <laughs> I mean, the second <laughs> the cat's back four weeks in a row. He's, he's really... doing better this week, though. Mm. But, so if you hear noises, it's the cat, all right? Yeah, he's been well fed this week. <laughs> um, the second I saw Martin and Ben, I was just like, oh, for God's sake. It really drags this week down, this storyline. I mean, we and must... Dark Keanu and like, ugh. We must have known that Ben and Martin were going to have more story coming up because obviously they released another trailer this week. They released two trailers this week. One that we analysed, or I analysed, which you can actually watch on our YouTube channel in case yeah, you wanted to watch there it. it. Is. But there's one which is which is a properly filmed, it's, a, it's filmed especially for TV trailer. Oh, yeah. They're not just showing clips. Mm. And in it, you can see Ben and Martin having a falling out on it again. And I thought, oh, surely that's ended now. And then this week came. Mm. <laughs> it's like, no, Ben and Martin's a thing again. It's so rubbish, isn't it? I, but it's rubbish because it's the fact that Martin went really dark and moody and broody and angry. And, you know, we were saying dark Martin's on the way and blah. Yeah. And, you know, it was... It, it was fine because it was of of a moment and you accepted it just. for the time just about i didn't but yeah but now <laughs> but now ben is now taunting him again and it's just and and martin's let martin's letting him now martin's now the mouse that ben's like tossing around to use mm. euphemism like as a cat because it's really stupid that ben's like why is he involving martin like it's not martin's fault this has happened or is it martin's fault but like yeah he's now Keanu's now taken Callum. By the way, everyone, Callum didn't make it to his police interview. No. <laughs> and his police training with that banana thing and the hostage situation with Ben and Lola. Waste of time. Didn't do any of his stuff no. with Keanu, did he? He just was like, yeah, handcuffs, let's go. I suppose he he, he, he it was in a bit of a sticky situation because it was literally, oh, hiya, Keanu, and then hit him around the face and then he was on the floor. Yeah. So I suppose Keanu could have done everything to him while he was still knocked unconscious. But... <laughs> Again, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> yeah. um, no. If it, was, if it was Jack Branning, he would be. Um... Oh, Jack Branning, he could have had a, a, a weight. He could have had a brick smacked into his face and he'd still be there taking more. <laughs> Like he got this beaten. Is a police to... report. <laughs> <laughs> no taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> like look at the beating he got from Phil. Yeah. Like, he was getting beaten down, and he was still there, like, going, "What are you talking about, Phil? I did nothing wrong." <laughs> I mean, Callum, it's just like a little smack around the face, oh, and no. he's just like that, poof, on a the floor. Slap. Yeah. God. But but so this going back quickly to Martin then. So oh, yeah. Martin's now kind of rolling on his back and letting Ben do what he wants. So all this kind of what we're meant to believe Martin had become has just yeah, fallen to the wayside. Forever. But now he's, yeah, but now he's gone back to the original Martin. Mm. So it, it's weird. I don't understand. I understand you have to involve Martin because Martin is the crux of the whole situation, really. He's the one who, who did this. He's the one who faked Keanu's death. Mm. But, because he's been blackmailed by Ben. Yeah. But now, black, but now he's being blackmailed again by Ben because at the end of the week, he, Ben said to him, if anything should happen to Callum, this 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 guy who, like, it means everything to him. Mm. If anything should happen to Callum, then I'm going to do the exact same thing to you and your family. Is that what Ben said to Martin? Yep, I'm going to do the exact same thing to you and yours, was Ben's was words. Insane. So, yeah, it's, and Martin's just... Like, you but, know what, Ben? Callum deserves to die now because you need to learn. I know. I'm, I'm, not I'm learning, s- is he? He really. Well, that's the point, isn't it? It's like the whole reason all this has happened that this has happened to Callum isn't actually Martin's fault. Mm. It's your fault. Yeah. But you won't admit. Someone fault had an or blame. affair with your stepmum. So you then went out your way to tell your dad, I'll get someone murdered for it. Yeah, which really Ben had no need to no. get involved in anyway. Knowing that Louise loved Keanu and Sharon loved Keanu, he mm. didn't think twice about killing killing Keanu off. What about their feelings? Yep. Now Callum gets smacked around the head and looks like a puppy dog on that photo, yeah. <laughs> which I love that photo Keanu sent. It's like a beagle. And it's like the worst thing in the world. How dare Keanu do yeah. this? Yeah, but this guy who he's only just got back together with as well. Mm. Okay, there's been weeks when he was crying and he was going, oh, I love Callum. Oh, I can't believe I had to do it, but I had mm. to do it to protect him. The but two now, Bens. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the two-sided Ben. Mm. He's like the Joker, isn't he? Mm. You know? Or Two-Face. Yeah. Is he Two-Face? Two-Face is from Batman. Yeah. So it's the same. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for Ben. And like the whole kidnap thing was ridiculous. Um, like Kate Oaks has an obsession with kidnapping. So many kidnaps. And all these different warehouses. Mm. And how did Keanu have this warehouse? I know they have like the industry of EastEnders is literally all these warehouses. Mm. Like all these broken companies and businesses. <laughs> it's like not really showing much of the East End, is it? Oh, it's just so stupid. And those stupid noises when they're in the warehouse. 
like those constant like weird background noises of like cold metal yeah like water filtering through a pipe yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> like when so like when you switch the radiators on so like in the morning and you hear <laughs> and you can just hear the the thermostat turning on it's just it's insulting and yeah, it's, it's just, just stupid it's just silly the whole storyline's stupid but you know why they're doing it don't you there's a boat coming story coming next week well i blame um james by who plays Martin? Because he suggested this to Kate Oates. How about Dark Martin? Martin has a bit of a dark moment. But they Kate. did that. They did that with the bridge. Yeah, and now this is still going on. Yeah, but this is it. Now there's going back. Why is Dark Martin not showing his Dark ugly Martin's head rubbish. again? Yeah, but it it's worked. All rubbish. It worked for the situation. That's my point. So I I, I I enjoyed it because it worked for the situation. But now Martin can't show his angry dark self again, and he's letting mm. Ben kind of talk talk at him it just doesn't work anymore and it doesn't work how they make like we're meant to feel sorry for ben because callan's being kidnapped but yeah. then he like threatens bex and martin's family again and it's like well i don't feel sorry for you ben. i mean this is going to upset a lot of people but it's, okay. it's, it's, it's no 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 what i'm about to say is going to upset oh. a lot of people not what we've said care. so far what we've said so far has upset some people <laughs> what i'm about to say is going to upset maybe a lot of people mm. but it's all riding on the strength that a lot of people are enjoying eastenders because of Hashtag Ballum. Mm. And I love Ballum. Don't get me wrong. It's great. Mm. But it's gone a bit like too... Like 60% of the time. It's gone a bit too far now. Why mm. can't we just have a nice relationship? Why can't we have a nice storyline where we see the relationship of two gay men living together mm. and the difficulties of that rather than... Kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. Rather than Ben trying to get someone killed and then having his boyfriend kidnapped. He's trying to put a boy and join the police force, which Ben isn't very happy about because he's a bit crooked. Mm. You know, so he just... goes straight and, and then so... he pretends to murder someone for his dad so he can't be straight and then he breaks up with him. And yeah. Then, oh, it's just stupid. And then decides he will go straight again this time, but he, Callum has to keep the secret. So Callum's now joining mm. the police force knowing, yeah. that, he's, <laughs> knowing that he, the guy he's dating has Murdered. killed someone, yeah. but he hasn't. It's Oh, it's just... It's getting it's so complicated and so convoluted. Mm. I'd, I'd, I'd happily, if after this story, this boat 35th anniversary, which I am looking forward to. I know I keep saying, oh, oh guess yeah. what is happening? It's 35th. But I am very much, genuinely, 100%. And what the scenes and the bits the bits and pieces I've seen of it, it looks it's going to be great. Mm. But I would happily, at the end of it, on the, the, the following week, on the Monday, they just say, right, everything that happened between Ben and Callum from this point didn't happen. <laughs> And that now we're going to do a nice relationship storyline, mm. a restart, and we're going to see we're going to see the ins and outs of these two guys having a relationship because that for me would make much more compelling viewing, and I think mm. a lot of viewers would agree. And I Ben works do. so much better as like the slightly nicer version. Like mm. we have like two versions of Ben on the show for the past year. It's like they're two characters and they just mor- morph them into one. Yeah. And now it's well, just Ballum. none of it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but he's so much better when he's not being all this stupid gangster stuff. No, I agree. And um, he asked Phil towards the end of the week to get the hundred thousand pounds. Well, I don't know where that's come from, but feels like, yep, done. Phil, chump change. But um, he he's turned up at the airport saying he's the man that's come to help. Well, no, he he no, it was a bit confusing, wasn't it? Because Ben was on the phone saying, "Dad, Dad, you've got to be quick. I've only got ten minutes. Yeah. Or else, who's Callum, the man you've got to help? Yeah, who's the man you've got to help?" And then they cut to the scene with Phil saying, "It's me." And it's, but he was actually talking to someone else. He wasn't talking to Ben. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was talking. I to... thought he was replying to Ben's voicemail. <laughs> Like no. with another voicemail. <laughs> yeah. It's really that's how the only way they can communicate. Yeah, because he said I've just got to get go get someone or meet someone, didn't he? Or no, he said like. meet me at yeah. this location. So who's he talking to? Who is he talking to? The Maybe Martin. Thirty fifth anniversary. <laughs> Grant. Yeah. Could be think? Grant. Peggy. Thirty years since the Mitchells turned up. That's true. Grant would make some sense, although that's a hell of a secret to keep. Hmm. Um Don't know who else Sam. It could be. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that'd be good. She can model. <laughs> she can go on stage. But which Sam? The Daniela Westbrook's Sam, Sam no. or second Sam? Second Sam. She can get involved in the Leo murder cover-up. Oh, yeah, because she was in the cover-up yeah. with uh, Den. She has experience. But, um, yeah, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. I hope it's not, like, something, like, crap. Like... Wow. What? I think that's the most offensive word <laughs> ever used on this podcast. No, bitch. <laughs> I mean, I suppose when we've done fan fiction in the past, we've used yeah, exactly the F word a couple of times. Um, so yeah, I hope it's not like a rubbish person, but mm. is it? Or maybe it's no one. I don't know who it could be. I mean, I, I didn't. 
Tubs. Well, they did mention Tubs. <laughs> I know, it was very exciting. Ben did say, Ben said, I'll get Tubs involved. No, it was it Martin, one of the two. They were, well, I'll yeah, give Martin him, did, I'll give yeah, him a call. I'll call Tubs, and he'll sort it out. <laughs> but the, like, again, tubs, tubs can't sort anything out. But again, this made no sense whatsoever, because Tubs and Martin left on really bad terms. So, But Martin still has his phone number in his address oh, book. Oh yeah, with the hit and run. Yeah, the guy that Sonia had to pay off. <laughs> Who's also disappeared. Well, because he got paid off. With but money ben that Sonia stole. Again, didn't he? So yeah, maybe Tubs can turn up at the boat the question if Tubbs is the death I'll be really upset well it makes sense couldn't cope it's iconic character <laughs> he, he does yeah, what they said. <laughs> yeah that's true he was iconic for a short time on the square <laughs> um, what else was this storyline we also had Dennis and what Sharon what else was this storyline Ben <laughs> <laughs> well I just hate the dark Martin stuff and that noise but there was Sharon and Dennis having their little mm. little chat Sharon said she's taking no more bulls from him anymore no. which is about time it's been what a month she was like stroking her belly saying this is your yeah. brother or sister feel it kick and Dennis kind of feigned a smile was like yeah nice but he kind of softened towards the end mm. um, and it's like oh, I don't know are you going to go off the boat Dennis I'm always thinking about this boat you see rock the boat you know making amends on the final hour to his mum oh what and so we're meant to feel bad for Dennis when he, <laughs> when he finally carks it yeah I don't know she swore on his life twice well no that's the thing isn't it that's the important thing he did she mm. did no she only sworn it once oh yeah but louise brought it up like a few weeks ago she, yeah so it's fresh in the viewer's mind mm. so i don't know i hope not if it's dennis i'll be really annoyed i mean because she... it, it's so it's like a really short-sighted like stephen bill abby sort of thing like it's so short-sighted to kill like a young character like that yeah but i said this to you before like because you said it's, it's the last what but it's not the last what because it's still vicky mm. last male <laughs> okay dennis then. It's like the last the last Dennis. Den, Den Dennis Watts. Is... Yeah, but there's Vicky. Yeah, but there's so much potential for Sharon as like a matriarch for a, a teenage son. It'd be really good. Yeah, but it would be. I agree with you, but only if Dennis is on side with Sharon and isn't a little punk. And that's where he is. He's a little punk. Mm. He needs. He's not. I mean, say what you will about Hunter. He was to begin with a, a very, very calculating, and that's really what you kind of want from yeah, Dennis. He was like seventeen, eighteen. Dennis is only like what thirteen. Yeah, but he's just... Can't a... kill a 13-year-old I'm not saying you should kill him. That's what I'm week. saying. If you're going to keep Dennis in... Oh, right. Make him more... If you want to make him a kind of like a Den Watts kind of character, then make him more of a Den Watts character. Den Watts was conniving and very smart and able to manipulate people. Dennis isn't. <laughs> Dennis just does things behind people's back and is really the kind of slimy snake and just kind of mm. doesn't really... He just doesn't care as long as he gets what he wants. Gets his Xbox game. Yeah, but he can grow into that character. So it would be really short-sighted of them to mm. have him be off. Plus, I don't know, would they kill a 13-year-old on, like... It would be a tricky ground, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, like drowning does. on a boat. But the actor had recently announced that he's had new headshots made. Yeah, see, Leo had new headshots made the other week, and now look what's happened to him. <laughs> yeah, he's fallen on a, he's fallen on a knife! <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I'd just be annoyed. If it was. Mm. But it's it's so like EastEnders, like Sharon gives birth and then her other son, like, do you know what I mean? Like she's given birth and one son's died and she's birthed another son and like, it's very EastEnders So Tish did do an interview with Heat Magazine recently. Oh yeah. And um, she was talking about the future of Sharon and she said she's not going anywhere and she's really looking forward to her next load of storylines. And like the way she was talking, it didn't sound like, like if Dennis died... You can't really picture much for Sharon's future storylines. Mm. Like it's when Carmel lost Shaquille. She and Bonnie Langford was like, "Well, I kind of have to leave because it doesn't make sense." She would be a very lonely character, mm. Sharon, especially so, if Phil doesn't hang around. Yeah. So hopefully that kind of indicates maybe it's not Den Dennis that um goes overboard. But who could it be? Anyone. I'm going through all of them. Ruby. I thought Ruby was going to get killed by Leo this week. <laughs> Did you? I thought that'd be a little twist. <laughs> she turns up at the door. But um so yeah, anyone's anyone's on my list. I'm going through them all one by one. Right. Who's your favourite? Well, who I think it will be. Mm. I think Keanu is like the most disappointing, like that's obvious. Because they announced he was leaving ages ago. Mm. But that sounds like it could it's like a hunter. Yeah. So it'd probably be him, but I'll be really like, oh. I don't know. I, I'd like it to be Mick or Linda. Yeah. Like someone actually big, not Tina. It won't be Mick. But like, if it's Tina, I'll be like, oh. It won't be Tina. Really? I mm. think she's on the possibility because she's a bit of a nothing character. Since you've asked, I think it's going to be... <laughs> no, I'm still answering your question. <laughs> okay, go on then. Go no, to... it's it. Tina. You think it's going to be Tina? Well, that'd just be like really rubbish. No. But, but like she's she's disposable. Yeah. I do, yeah, I get what you're saying of her being disposable. 
But I don't think it'll be Tina. I think it will be Linda. I really do. I do think it'll be Linda. I really do it think it's going to be Linda. It is all very final, but then... It just, it just seems to... They, they, what else can they do? What else can they do? Also, she's been doing interviews recently. And I've been yeah. on Hair Watch. She's had her hair all blonde right up to the root. And Linda, she's been having her, her roots like halfway down mm. now. Mm. So how will they explain this boat disaster? Then a few weeks later, Linda's had her hair done. It's the Thames. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of waste in the Thames. Well, that's not very Bleached in character hair. for an alcoholic who's <laughs> struggling. She wouldn't be doing her hair highlights, will she? But I, I, if they, if if Linda, if it's not Linda, then I, I don't want them to go. Oh, and now she's going to AA meetings and she's seen the error of her ways and everything's okay. Yeah. Since the disaster, she's realised. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's re, re, yeah. She's fixed. Because that's the easy way out. And I know everyone's going to hate me. Oh God, everyone's going to hate me this week. But I, I, I do think we're done with Linda and Mick. I, I much mm, rather, I much rather they took separate paths. And it'd be a really good time for them to go on like mm. the anniversary. Mm. It's big enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean the one who the girl who plays Rainy, um, she's doing lots of running recently. You haven't seen her doing much work in the past week or so. Mm-hmm. Is Rainy off? I, I hope it's not boat? Rainy. I love Rainy. I love that she's a reoccurring character, and I love her her long her long stint now as well. The girl who plays Chantel, she's taken all her EastEnders information off her social media, and she got a new headshot. Is it Chantel? Dodgy, dodgy. Might not be in Thames, it might be back at home at Walford. Oh yeah, I suppose we're all guessing it's going to be on the boat. Mm. Again, that could be a heck of a twist. That'd be Ollie's very clever. There. Witnesses it all. Can't mm. talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't say what happened. But yeah, could be anyone. I could imagine if it's Chantel and Linda. Mm. Ollie would just have a breakdown. Because the BBC released, like, have you seen? They released a, if uh, if you haven't watched Descenders in a year, they released a catch up video. No, I haven't. It's about three minutes long and it tells you about Shianu and the whole affair and the Whitney, Leo and Balam storyline. And they mm. also add in the Chantel one randomly. Right. It's like, why is that on the big catch up? Because they haven't really done much with Chantel and Grey That's what I mean. these past few weeks. And the catch up was to get people to watch um, Anniversary Week. So why have they plonked Chantel and Grey in that little roundup video? Mm. So maybe, like I say, everyone's on my list. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see. I can Literally see. everyone. You should, you should, <laughs> you should work for the uh, press. You should get Kathy and get a story, and then work <laughs> for the press. Right. So that's enough anal- analyzing of that. Um, so we're going to go do our second game, and then we will finish up the roundup. You may be aware that it's Valentine's Day. I'm not aware. Valentine's I've, week. Well, I've had nothing given to me, so <laughs> I was completely oblivious to it. Where's my chocolates? Well, maybe they got lost. <laughs> in the post. Well, maybe, because if you remember back to Christmas, where I had the special Christmas game of Cat Slater's Secret Santa. Oh, I do remember that, yeah. Where she had a Secret Santa list, all got modelled up, and you had to help her find out who her presents were for. Well, I had to deliver the presents to mm. the people. From the clues you gave That's me. That's right. So we've got a spin-off of that now, oh, which right. is called Leo's Love List. <laughs> has Leo been internet shopping while he's been up in the attic, hasn't he? Yeah, has. he's very he's got lots of time spare. Mm-hmm. So he thought, I'm weird and creepy, I'm gonna make I'm gonna get presents for people's valentines for people around the square i've got amazon prime <laughs> i might as well use it but because he's um been a bit distracted with his new looking hole um yeah. he's Is that forgotten what you're calling Whitney now? <laughs> <laughs> he's forgotten the presents that he bought he's forgotten who he bought them for because they're fool. meant to be secret valentines you see he had one job <laughs> so hopefully you can help him mm-hmm. um pair them all up okay i'll give it my best shot because leo he you know he wants to be creepy and slightly weird and let people have their presence. Yeah, and I want to help him. I want to facilitate mm. that. So let me have a go. Well, we still can. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to give you the present and you have to tell me who from Wolford it matches up to. So are you ready? Um, yes. Ready, 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 ready. Right. So the first present mm-hmm. is a Muslim religion book for dummies. <laughs> Um, you know those dummies like PC for dummies or yeah. dog walking for dummies 101 with the, the like yellow strip across yeah, them? Yeah. It's one of them. I know exactly. I know the books you're talking about. I, <laughs> I, I feel some listeners might find that an insult. <laughs> But um, not when you find out who it's matched to. Well, it must be Bobby. No. Oh, for for dummy. Oh, Ian. He's not a dummy. No, Ian. Ian Bill. That's correct. Yay! Because Ian's a dummy and he has no interest in taking in Bobby's interests or his religion. No. So he's got a Muslim religion religion book for dummies. But Leo's got that for him. Yeah. As, as a Valentine's. Because Leo's gift. a bit, you know, a bit creepy, mm. bit on the nose. Do you think Leo does, does Leo fancy these people? Is he just doing it to be kind? He's just a weirdo. Okay. That's why he's doing weird things. Summed up in one beautiful <laughs> accomplishment. Right, so he has gotten 10 protein powder tubs from Night and Way. <laughs> Wait, they sell on Amazon, do they? He's an Amazon store. <laughs> That's his own store. Amazon store. Um, protein. Kush? Yeah. Yeah. Just to rub it in. <laughs> I'd like to rub it in. <laughs> 
What to Leo Kush? No, yeah, I'm not fussy actually. Bit of both. Yeah, I did, I did have both. Pick up his peephole. Right. Uh, fancy dress, police uniform. This is decidingly much easier than last time. <laughs> um, well, it must be Callum. Yeah, with Callum like that. Well, a bit insulting because he's not a real cop. Yeah, but that's he, correct. I was going to say it's, he might want to wear it for the evening so he doesn't get his proper uniform. Or ripped. Leo's just insulting him. Oh yeah, he's taking the mic off. Mm. Mm. Right, we've got anti-aging skin cream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the obvious answer would be Kathy, but Kathy uses the youth of the square to take her. <laughs> to the young. Her, so yeah, she absorbs the young to make herself youthful. It has to be Kathy. That's. Correct. Oh, oh, my goodness. I'm getting them all really right. Right. He has purchased 10 pre-made fake social media accounts. I don't know. The time of us recording this game, we don't actually know <laughs> who had the fake account. Mm. So the general census is it's either Dottie or Dennis. Mm. Double D. Again, not talking about Whitney. <laughs> so I'm gonna, well, I, think, I think it's Dennis. He got them yeah, for Dennis. got them for Dennis. Fake accounts. That's correct. It's like when you buy likes, isn't it? Well, um... Fiverr or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or by Instagram followers. Yeah. Mm. That's correct, Dennis. Yeah. Rickman a... slash Watts slash Mitchell. Slash Denny. Right. A 20 pack of dog food. If you 20 don't... tins of dog food. Dog food? Who's got a dog? Oh, um, Bronson. Um, Who looks after Bronson? Well, Karen. No, that's incorrect. Well, hang on. It must be <laughs> someone who has a dog. Yes. There's only Bronson and not... yeah, Lady okay. Di. Mm-hmm. So then it's either a Carter or a Taylor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, well then if it's not Karen... There's a lot of characters there to choose from. Well, this is I mean, obscure. you got that wrong, so that's wrong. Well, let me guess. You already have guessed. Well, Mick. You guessed Karen. No. Linda. No. Shirley. Well, Tina. You, you find Oscar. out at the end. <laughs> Ollie. Right. Sandwich vouchers from Keegan's Butcher Baker business. Well, Some free sandwiches for lunch. Well, it wouldn't be Grey, because his business have chucked him out of the building. That's true. Unless Leo's being Oh, is he being snide, snide again? I don't know. I don't know. Well, then I'm going to say... So far, he's done things to be snide. Apart from the dog food, apparently. He's been kind. <laughs> you um, don't know that. So... Oh, it's not someone whose dog's died, is it? But that's the old question. You can't go back. No, I, I, I can't get over who it might be. Um, <laughs> so, the sandwich vouchers, I think, is for um, Grey. Nope, that's wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> right, last one now. <laughs> Just had a sandwich. <laughs> He has taken £5,000 from Dot Cotton's bank account and given it to someone. <laughs> I mean, if it's Sonia, which I'm presuming it is Sonia, then she doesn't really need any help doing that, does she? She's not been able to do it yet. Yeah, she did. She took it out of Dot's account. Oh, yeah, but she keeps getting caught. Well, she put it back in again. Mm. She felt guilty, didn't she? Sonia. That's correct. Yay! He took £5,000 from Dot's account to give to Sonia. That's kind of him. So, two wrong. Yeah, I've got so the dog failed. food. The dog food. Okay, Mitch. No. Uh, <laughs> and the sandwich vouchers. So the dog food, he yeah. bought that for Lady Di, the dog. Lady Di can't open a tin of food by <laughs> she herself. She can still receive Valentine's present. What, for then to punish? So he was punishing her <laughs> by basically showing her the food she could eat, but can't open and f- That's have right. her first. Any more guesses on the sandwich vouchers? Oh, sandwich vouchers. Uh, Who Kathy? wants a sandwich? No, Who Kathy's wants already sandwich? got skin cream. Who wants a sandwich, did you Kathy's say? not getting two. Who'd want a sandwich? I want a sandwich. I'm hungry. Um, Do you want a Keegan Baker Butcher? Sandwich. <laughs> yeah, they they look nice as sandwiches. Ian. No. Right, that's yeah, it. No, no, no. no. Wit. Tiffany. No. It was Mo. the Jags. Jags? Because he likes to eat, apparently. So he's oh, led you, to believe. You did this last time. Yeah, for crisps. You said it was like crisps. <laughs> yeah, and I went through every single character and you said, oh, no, it's Jags. <laughs> I've been burnt twice by that now. Jags is going to appear on every version of this game. Yeah, and it'll be food related. <laughs> Because that's all his character is. <laughs> there you go. So two incorrect. So you didn't do too bad, but Six. you didn't pass. You have to get 100% to pass on this game because it's easy, apparently. But the first ones are easy. And then you go obscure and say <laughs> he bought dog food for a dog. They can't that makes open sense. it. Yeah, but Lady Dyke doesn't have opposable thumbs or little fingers that she can prize the ring pull from. Let alone a, use a can opener. Well, there you go. That was that. Oh, so right. you failed. Um, Leo. I didn't fail. I, I, that, that's a <laughs> you strong failed pass. Leo's love list. I'm glad so to fail Leo's love. The next one will be Easter, and we'll see who's um, doing the Easter hunt. <laughs> Whoever rhymes with Easter or eggs or hunt. Bex. Bex Easter Bex. <laughs> Bex will be dead by now. We don't know that. Right, so there you go. That was Leo's love list. So amongst all the divorce, the stabbings, the stalkings, mm, there was love. There's love. 
It's hard. But only for a few weeks. A few tops. weeks? Oh, until I see. Until I thought, he dies. I thought you meant love. Like, Valentine's Day was going to last for a few weeks now. <laughs> well, it is going to last a whole week. That's a whole week, week yeah. But not yeah. T- well, actually, the aftermath could carry on through the evening. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> Valentine's Day is going to last forever. Timelines on EastEnders must just be erratic, mustn't they? Because mm. now you have to, in theory, imagine that if after the end of next week, that Valentine's Day, that the, the following week, two weeks have passed. Mm. But they haven't. Well, they've been doing nothing. Yeah, they just kind of come around and yeah, chatting about what. Well, it was a nice day. Well, you never guess the day I had. Mm. I was on a boat and it flooded. But um, yeah, we had Jean and Daniel, where Jean wants to celebrate Valentine's Day. Daniel's being a bit grumpy. Doesn't really like it or believe in it or. Bit like you. Yeah, a bit like me. Yeah. I, one time I related to Daniel, <laughs> and he's only got a few weeks left. He can't bother. He's feeling a bit sick. But then Mo quite rightly said to him that you know Jean's looking after you. Maybe you could selflessly think well Jean really loves Valentine's Day perhaps you should show her that you're not just using her for her kind nature and care mm. so if he does wise old Mo wise old Mo and also Mo had a lot of Valentine stuff to flog so mm, like thongs weren't they or something? balloons thongs cards <laughs> you know it kind of made business sense for Mo to kind of give a word in Daniel's ear so mm. Daniel threw a bit of money Oh, yeah, because he had all that stuff. All that must have been from Big Mo. I'm yeah, guessing. of course. So oh, Mo made a min. Sense. Mo made an absolute In min. her own house as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So she'd probably resell it the next day as well. She probably charged to set it up. Yeah, and then took it down that evening and then sold it back on the market <laughs> the next day. That was Mo's way. Pat would be proud. Oh, God, Pat's yeah. up there smoking, going, yeah, that's right. Pat's sitting at the bar. That bar's still there. Oh, yeah. Pat's bar with the twirly optic. Yeah, every, she's looking at every drink you can imagine. She's looking at Mo, thing, yeah, that's yeah, right. Nice one, Mo. <laughs> we knew how to turn the tricks when we were young, didn't we, Mo? Mm. Wink. And um, what else happened with Daniel? He had like a thing with Rainy where he gave her those tickets. Those tickets are like being passed around. The boat tickets. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking whoever's whoever's holding them is the one that's. Oh, so now you plop. think it's Rainy and Stuart? Well, it depends who they give it to. They might give it to someone else. Actually, I've just thought it might make sense for it to be Stuart because he's kind of had his. Three, you know, 180, mm. he's turned, he's gone better. Like, now. maybe he'll save Mick and Linda, and, like, mm. that'll be his redemption. And, but then then die, yeah. and he'll be like, sorry, Mick, <laughs> I always thought you were my brother. And that could be, like, a reveal that you find out mm. he's his brother or something. I'd have a theory, this is about Keanu, though. If Keanu dies, mm. and, like, he's not told anyone where Callum is yet, and he's died, so then Ben and Phil, like... Well, like, the containers... Find, ...have to find Callum... <laughs> Before he dies. I've put a set of intricate clues and you must work out where well, no, Callum there is. No, there won't be any clues, but Keanu has said, um, once I have the money, give me three hours and then I'll tell you where he is. But if Phil beats him up and kills him, mm. no one will ever find Callum ever again. Poor Callum. He's like a He'll puppy. Will, that he's just, away. He, when you drive up into the forest and you ch- chuck him out the boot and the puppy just watches you as you drive away mm. with big eyes. So that could be added drama. Mm. So Daniel. <laughs> yeah, Daniel. Yeah. So Daniel gave. He's not on the boat. Daniel gave Rainy money and said, "I want you to do what you will to make it the best funeral possible." And he apologised to Rainy, and Rainy swallowed her pride and said, "I forgive you." And so now she's going to do a nice funeral. So that track Second we thought. Funeral. Yeah. So that track. <laughs> Forget you had a funeral already. So that road that we thought Rainy was taking, which was she was going to be callous and not care, and like all she thinks about is the money and not about the the. You know, looking after the people who are dying. Mm. Actually, no. Rainy's now gone back on track as well. She has. Her and Stuart are going to be a nice funeral directors mm. together. The new Pearly is it Pearly? Pam and Les. Yeah. Yeah. Was it no Birdie? Birdie and Les. Yeah. So give it a few years, and you'll find out the Stuart. Mm. I do want like maybe them to have a storyline now. Like they're a bit. They're like there, but not really there. Rainy and Stuart, aren't they? They oh. haven't really got a. Story I, I'm going. championing them, them to have a story. Yeah, I have for almost a year now. When mm. you first saw the signs of Rainy and Stuart's dynamic, oh yeah, when he was like abusing together. her and following we, her and throwing jars at her. Well, no, because she no, because she was threatening to like kind of tell everyone how nasty he mm. is, and then he was like, "Well, you do that, and I'll do the same back to you." But then they found a common love. <laughs> well, they they did. They found a common place when they were both at Narcotics Anonymous. Mm. And they both like biscuits. Oh, yeah, she was eating his biscuits. Yeah, and so they, you know, they found a bit, if you think about it, not too dissimilar to Daniel and Jean, how they found each other. Oh, yeah, Mr. Annoying Man. The Annoying Man at the at the, uh, the chemo, yeah, at the chemo. So it's a very similar story. Mm. So perhaps that's Rainy again. She saw she saw herself in Jean and Daniel. Possibly. Her and Stuart. But um, not much I have to say about Daniel and Frey, because I don't like Daniel and it's just boring. So what do you want to say about them? <laughs> he's looked grumpier and grumpier as he's... Yeah. He's, he's been quite ill, actually, hasn't he? So he's like mm, very obviously, um, well, he doesn't want to go to the boat party, and no. but but Jean really does, um, and so he's kind of making up for it by just being generally a bit nicer to her. Mm. There you go. I've just summed up the whole story. Lovely. So we'll move on to the next story then, which is the big one: Leo's peephole. 
Yes, yeah, the final storyline. Final storyline for Leo. Is it? He's out of the attic. <laughs> He's come out of the attic. He's sneaking around the house. I mean, I got told off on Twitter this week. Oh. Because I said, what the heck is he doing for his toilet problems? Mm, lots of people have been asking that. Mm, and people have quite rightly said that, well, you know, he's sneaking around the house. So we could easily have done a quick whiz in the <laughs> toilet in the nice aubergine green yeah. bathroom. But then this is my point. What if he's doing a poo? <laughs> right. Mid poo, right? There's no knowing. Sonia. If... Hello. Yeah, exactly. There's no hey, knowing Whitney. if <laughs> Whitney, of course, stinks in here, light a match. There's no knowing when they're coming back. No, and there's he, a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's ins and outs, you know, all the time. Mm-hmm. So what if he's there doing the poop <laughs> and then someone comes in? What does he do then? Panic. So I'm sorry, but the toilet problem has still not been explained. And for me, that's the big story this week about Whitney and Leo. <laughs> maybe, maybe she's kept Lou Bill's bidet. What, what does she have? What's the thing when you go to the toilet yeah, in your bidet. room? Yeah, bidet. Oh, no, it's not a bidet. Um, um, a pot. Like a, <laughs> what's it called? A, pot, a bedpan. A bedpan. Maybe she's kept Lou Bill's bedpan from mm. 1988, 86. Right. And it's in the attic and Leo's just using that. That's true. That's true. But then it would stink up there. <laughs> that's true, yeah. And it would go through. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, go into Whitney's room. <laughs> Wouldn't you be like, cool? Well, she'll be sleeping, right? Yeah, I know. I'd be up all night <laughs> smelling that. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Because he's been up there about seven days. <laughs> about, yeah. Because it was... We think. It was the, wasn't it the end of last week He, you yeah. saw his eye peeping? No, it's Thursday no, it was, last yeah, week. Yeah, it was like midweek, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so he's been up there a while. Almost ten days. Mm. I mean, maybe he's like a Barbie doll or a Ken doll. Maybe he's just got nothing there. No, he has because of the hotel. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, God, that must feel bad for Whitney. Just for all that. <laughs> yeah, she's probably find out she's pregnant next week. No, he's dead. Little baby Leo. <laughs> but, um, you know, he did come out of the attic and he was hiding in the living room and Whitney kind of knew he was around. I've just skipped loads of the storyline. No, that's fine. It's okay. there was a letter as well that but, he overheard okay. with okay. Kush. So, yeah, so Kush, Whitney's feeling guilty because she didn't go to Kush's hearing. Okay, I'm going to just fill it in quick. I'm good at that. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah. I can do it quick. So... Kush had a hearing. That's what Leo says on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, I can do it quick. Oh, I'm good at that. Blonk. Um, Kush is had a hearing and Whitney didn't turn up because Whitney fell asleep because mm. she's so. She's overtired. doing this thing where she's she doesn't stressed. go outside, basically. Yeah, she's um. What's she it? feels safest. Is it necrophilia? No, it's not no, necrophilia. Not necrophilia. <laughs> no, it's agrophobic. Um, agrophobic. Yeah. But it's like she's got that thing where the only place she feels safe is in her bedroom, which obviously mm. is ironic because above her, a guy's watching her. That's the one spot where she shouldn't feel safe. And that's mm. the one spot where she said to Kush when Kush came to see if she was okay, I've still got a letter from Tony somewhere in this room. You've got 30 seconds to find it. Go find it. No, <laughs> And and he's, and uh, you know, it's the, it's the one thing that kind of she's kept and she's not really, she's still not really explained to anyone why she's kept it. But Leo's found the letter after hearing that news mm. and is torn now because she thinks that that letter is almost a confession that Whitney had lied because instead of him putting in that letter I'm sorry or apologizing to Whitney all he says in it is I still love you and so that's Mm -hmm. in Leo's mind a confession indirectly by Whitney to say that she strung him along she did fancy him she did she liked the relationship she was having and so yeah so it's still Whitney's fault Mm -hmm. so what does he do he brandishes a knife and uh, goes a bit loopy crazy Mm -hmm. but it was nice she had like she hit him with a jewelry box around the head yeah, I thought it was meant to be the hairdryer. No, she she was like grabbing a few things, wasn't she? She was thinking, no, nah, it's not hard enough, <laughs> no. But um, I mean, it's like a kind of a nod to the Lucy Bill being hit around the head with a jewellery box by Bobby. Oh, why would they do that, though, as a link? Because it's like similar time of year. It's like the anniversary things, isn't it? I think well, that's a bit nods. loose for me. I mean, like last week or It might week not be. Before... I'm just saying that's how I... Like, oh, okay. It was a, a jewellery box around the head. But when they knocked like Dennis on the ground and you saw it was the same spot that where Lucy got knocked when mm. Bobby pushed him, that was clever. But I don't see... I think it's a bit... I think you're looking too far into something <laughs> there by saying, oh, the reason Whitney used jewellery box... I'm not saying the reason was. I'm just saying it was like... A, it's just a nod. I like that all the jewellery in Whitney's jewellery box was big loop earrings. Yeah, gold loops. <laughs> yeah, just... And a letter. All these go- yeah, and her letter that she keeps in there secretly. <laughs> but um, I mean, that was a really good scene, the um, horror chase scene. Yeah, I loved it. It was like good old Whitney. She's mm. always good, Whitney. She's such... Um, she really deserves to be like leading lady. The actress them. Shona, mm. she's fantastic. And, uh, and kudos also to the actor who plays Leo. I think oh, yeah, he's, he's I really really good. I really do think that. And they work so well together. Like mm. they feel, you can tell that both the actor, actors feel really comfortable doing what yeah, the scenes they're doing. They need to go. Yeah, mm. and they're really comfortable in doing it, which is why, in a way, even though Leo's been stabbed, and I think you're hoping for a Chrissy Watts 
Sam Mitchell, I am. Zoe I wanted, Slater. I wanted story. this from when Alfie was dead. Mm. Inverted commas on Boxing Day. I was fully up for the cover up. Yeah. They didn't give it to me, but I can I can feel because Ruby was kind of involved by like bringing the roses around for Whitney. Right. She was showing a bit of concern. And cats involved, so I can see like a Ruby Cat Whitney cover up. Or well, bury the but bury the body in the garden or something. I don't know. I don't know. Ruby will have an answer, won't she? Well, she... She's got her bin bags and all sorts. <laughs> yeah, she knows. She's a CSI dream, mm. isn't she? She just she knows how to cover up a murder very well. Like, yeah. she was, like that guy she was trying to put, cut off his penis. I mean, yeah, it would be really good. Like anyone could come home at any point. Mm. Like Bex lives there, Dottie lives there, Sonia lives there, Martin. Martin would freak out he's not good around dead people but old martin martin late 1999 <laughs> martin late 2019 would have been there he'd have been chopping up the buddy with them but now he's gone Can't back go to he's it. reverted to fruit and veg mine mm. you know pay rise i got a pay rise for me and bill mine yeah no it'd be cool if they did a story again similar to mm. that and yeah it'd be exciting and tense but i don't know how are they going to fit we don't know what's going to happen next week i just presumed that all the stories were going to be on the boat are we just going to keep no, that because they said there was drama on the square and that everyone's mm. like, oh, I don't care. But that's obviously the drama on the square. Yeah, but so I, I guess... think we should feel like we should care. Cause there's well, I do we... now. Well, well, not just that, though. Now you've put the Chantel and Grey seed in yeah. my mind. And Sharon giving birth. Yeah, they're sh- exactly. It's all going off. It's mad, isn't it? Like, we're all concerning ourselves. Well, I am concerning myself about this boat party. Mm. And actually, it's all going on. It's all going off. Everywhere. So you have to work out who's not at the boat party who's going to help Whitney, which Ruby, she's nowhere to be seen. Mm. But Cat is on the boat. Oh well, there you go then. So maybe it kind of puts a puts a pause on your idea. I think that we, uh, Leo's going to still be alive, and I worry he's going to come alive again because he did the he hit his head on the kitchen dots kitchen table. Yes, <laughs> he can take quite a bump. That can. We got straight back up again, didn't he? Yeah. Because Whitney went to tall nine, nine, yeah. nine, and then he's like, Rah! and he came back <laughs> up again. It was really so exciting. We've already had one fake. I'm dead, mm. and then he was on. And it, yeah, was but it was really, very short, very brief. Yeah, but still, it well, was like it was like when Dirty Den was hit, he came up and grabbed her by the ankle, didn't he? And she mm. gave him another whack. But the thing is, is that as amazing as that would be, all three of them were there, so they had to cover up oh, yeah, the, that's the true. murder together. Yeah, but they're all friends. It was only yeah, but it was they're only women doing it. It was together. only Whitney there, wasn't it? And I, I, I just don't think I can't see it. I think Whitney will be come clean, and you know, no, Jack will turn won't. up. Jack will be there in a second. Jack knows Jack's got. A, Jack will sniff it out. Jack will no. literally walk out the big doors and you'll be like someone's been murdered around here i need <laughs> to go and find out who because this is so obviously self-defense she mm. won't just admit it that's not what happens it's like trevor and big mo all over again it's like that won't happen she will they will have to cover it up because it's that'll be fun i love a cover up yeah but you say it's obviously self-defense but he's fallen on the knife so, so oh, he was on top of her. Yeah, yeah, but, but he fell on top of her. Also, he was in the house and like everything was locked. Like, there's a lot of. Yeah, but then no one can. Pro- and there's all those reports yeah, about but, him breaking in. Yeah, but no one can prove that he locked the doors while she was in the house, other than Whitney. So technically, it's just her word her against way- his, and he's dead. Yeah, so. but, cool. <laughs> but is he dead? That's the point. Is he dead? Is this furthering? I think, is. I, I think there was a report on Digital Spy when it ended that he he was the death. There's a death this week, death next week, and I think. The death the week after. Do you can't think... confirm that, everyone. <laughs> Neither deny <laughs> or I confirm. I think there is. But I think he is dead. Do you think Kush will um, take the blame? No, he's too good boy, Nee. Yeah, but that's the point. He can't possibly. He'll be like, I don't, want, I don't want you to don't go to prison with Nee for 10 days or something. I don't know. <laughs> blame on Stacey. She's off. Yeah, blame on Stacey. Yeah, <laughs> Stacey came back to get. I mean, get it does some make knickers. me think because we know that Kat is off for um a little bit a month or so she's suspended the actress mm. so is that gonna like affect the storyline if she is involved with it or yeah see there's another have a quick rewrite aren't they there the number of quick rewrites they're having to do mm. i do feel sorry for any showrunners on that show honestly it's just the mischief the actors mm. get up to on that program well, maybe they're just putting back up in the attic not to die yeah well wrapped he, up in they do my theory from last bag. week on the podcast where i said Something happens to him in the attic and he just dies in the attic, remember? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. So just shove him up there and say, oh, he must have rolled onto the knife (laughs) in a daze when he's trying to go to the toilet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, while he's doing a poo. Mm. Uh, I don't know. You're right. It's, it's, it, she could easily claim self-defense, mm. but there are a few intricacies. Yeah, she might have a Any, bit of doubt. Yeah, so. some intricacies. that they, So a doubt could appear. She's going to have to bury him. Jack's bound to get involved. Jack has to get mm. involved. It's a, Maybe it's he'll a help. Jack, that's what I mean. It's a Jack-centric story, isn't it? It's mm. like... You know, I'm in the, the police. Boot. I'll sort it out. Does Dot have a garden? Can we go into the slab? I think she has slabs? that small little patio area, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, go into the hair. Hmm. Also, you saw um, Dot's side door, which I completely forgot she had. 
Because in the uh, if you watch Classic EastEnders, mm. she doesn't have a back door to the kitchen in, no. in the kitchen. She has one which is in the hallway into the side path. That's been thirty years. Well, no, because Whitney tried to get out of there. Mm. So the door that I forgot existed was there. <laughs> Sorry, it's just a little thing oh. I spotted. Sorry, this, I'm not trying to be clever or smart. I'm just saying that's mm. something. I, I mean, remember. the square will be empty because everyone's on a boat. So there's lots of Daniel time and for Gina. her to... Maybe, Jean is. That's what I'm saying. Jean's on a boat, though. Oh, Jean goes on the boat, does she? Yeah, there's pictures of her, isn't there? I'm sure. <laughs> She's on the boat. Don't I know don't where Daniel know. is. Maybe Daniel's dead, too. No, because Daniel and Jean are meant to be... Because Daniel gave Jean's ticket away. So how does Jean get on the boat? Maybe she takes Whitney's ticket, because Whitney's busy. With Ruby covering off a murder. Maybe Daniel will say that he murdered him. Oh, yeah, he can take blame. He's dying. Yeah, he's going about to die. Yeah. So compassionate. They'll just say, oh, he's guilty. not guilty. <laughs> just let him get on. That's Desperate Housewives, that is. Oh, unbeknown to I, did mm. I do that? But yeah, very exciting. Very unexpected. It wasn't announced, which I like when things weren't announced. Mm. And this whole thing of them saying it's going to run for a year. We were worried that Leah was going to be here for like months and months and months but no yeah yeah on to the next phase of the storyline well yeah but that's it the next phase of the storyline i smell mick and whitney yeah you know mick helps her he like brings him onto the boat as like a food carriage and <laughs> plops him off <laughs> well, into they, the tent they make they make canapes plops out the body of, out <laughs> <for> leo <laughs> <laughs> he's like handing it around and it's like mm, this tastes good <laughs> who who made it and they, they just laugh and go ha ha Leo <laughs> just... that could happen actually because Mick doesn't go with Linda so mm. if he could say oh we'll we'll bring him onto the boat as in part of our like food buffet cart put him on a cart push him in the Thames put him in the Thames no 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 why At- attach the um, Queen Vic bus to him push no, him in no you got to keep the Queen Vic bus <laughs> why have they brought the Queen Vic vi- bus onto the boat because it's going to be a plot point I can feel yeah I feel that too but, um... it's going to be attached to Leo's body Dunk. But further strengthens the case that Linda is the one to go and go. What with Leo? Yeah, Leo and Linda. Mm-hmm. The L's. <gasps> yeah, double L. Double L. Double Bloomin' L. <laughs> double L is actually Roman numeral for 35 and it's the 35th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been clever. That would have been. XXXV, <laughs> Xavier, Xander. <laughs> All these characters they could have introduced last minute. Anyway, mm. that's enough of that. Um, so we're going to go on to our comments and um, see who won the week and everything like that. And we're going to read out your comments from the questions we asked from this week and last week. The special ones on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. This is that time at the end of the show where we read out your comments on our Twitter, our Facebook and our Instagram page. More details will be said at the end of the episode. We also go through birthdays and deaths that happened this time last year. And we jump in Ben's time wormhole of doom and we find a story that happened years ago this week. So we start off with Ben. We are. No birthdays. No one was born. They all wait (laughs) to the anniversary, you see. Oh, yeah. Keep it keep it for the good one. Mm. So, yeah. No birthdays. A few deaths. We had 14th of February 1999. Saskia Duncan ah. met her end by Steve Owen. Yes, yes. With an ashtray. With a bit like ashtray. Leo and Whitney, isn't it? Ashtray around the head. But not really. It's not a knife. No, no. But like the same. Accidental murder by the person trying to murder the it wasn't person. wasn't accidental, was it? He didn't mean to kill Saskia. She tried to kill him. And he hit around the head. Uh, Whitney, Leo tried to kill Whitney. He then died. I suppose you could argue so. <laughs> uh, 13th of February 2015, Nick Cotton oh, died. Oh, I guess that. Uh, we can guess the next one. There's one more. Okay. So yeah, he died in the same room where Reg Cox died in episode one. It's a shame they didn't save that for... Um... Oh, yeah, well, I suppose they did, didn't they? Because then the opening of the anniversary week was... They found the body. And yeah. Stacey said the very first line again. It's, oh, it stinks in here. <laughs> But she said it yes. instead of um who said it? Den. Den. Fifteenth mm. of February two thousand nineteen. One year ago. Fifteenth of February. Mm-hmm. Two thousand nineteen. Work this out. I really can't. How dumb is that? Oh. <gasps> <laughs> what? No, it's it's not Shaquille, is it? It's late. It's no, much late. No, Shaquille. It? Oh um, <laughs> no, I not Ray. No, Ray's Ray. Was a male. Ray. No, Ray died in New Year. Was years. it natural causes or was it? Yes. Natural While causes. watching a documentary. Oh, um, <laughs> Blooming Dr. Leg. Yes, Oh my correct. God, that was like, what, that was a year ago. Yeah, because Punk Mary yeah, and Lofty came Lofty back came for the back. anniversary Lofty on the gave 19th. A, gave a check to, Sharon, she's still given Michelle that check. It's out of date now. Three months is the validity. And she went to spend time with Michelle, didn't she? Oh, so she took the check with time her. out to think for three months. Cool, but that converted well to Australian dollars because mm. the exchange rates, like, you could get, you're probably a millionaire in, in Australia <laughs> with like £10,000. Yeah, the last Julius theme, Dr. Leg had two in a row, didn't he? One for his death and one for his funeral. 
And that's the well, last time. Mm. Oh, talking of Julia's theme. Right. I just have to remind everyone <laughs> that we're still looking for... Four- We've had two suggestions for forfeits. Mm. For if Ben's wrong... <laughs> Or, or you're wrong. wrong. Or I'm wrong. Because Ben's always Ben's wrong, isn't well, it? Well, if you're wrong, Ben Ben thinks there's going to be a Julius theme at some point yeah, during the anniversary not? week. And I say there's not going to be one. And whoever gets it wrong has to do a forfeit. So if you have an idea for a forfeit, send it to us. Details will be at the end of the podcast. Mm. And the episode that I looked back at was the one where Saskia dies with Steve. Yes. Oh, it's on our Twitter. It is. The last two minutes, which is the best minute. Right, but so, um, E20's yeah. opening, you see. Oh, E20. Yeah. What a good name for a uh, pub. <laughs> um, Dot, is there any weird Dot's lining up to go in? Like, yeah. as a VIP. That's not odd. You know, Dot, she likes to stick her nose in where it's not... And there's, like, valid. another old woman. I don't know who she is. Like, another old woman with her. And she's, like, really excited because it's, like, 75p for a cocktail because it's opening night. <laughs> 75p. And um, Peggy and Frank are worried at the Vic because um, it's busier at E20. Not, it's the same storylines that they always do, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, flash in a pan, yeah. it'll be okay. It's and only then, one night. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's when um, Saskia is all mental and she um wants to kill Steve and then he gets her a ashtray and then blames it on matthew the dj dj <laughs> but um so yeah that was it really that's Ma- the end matthew ended up taking going to jail for that doesn't yeah he? it was like a save matthew campaign wasn't it mm. in the papers so very big a, matthew might come back for the anniversary no the actor said he doesn't want to come back doesn't he he doesn't like acting doesn't like being in the public eye oh really yeah I mean, so he's quite young when he was on eastenders mm. i was gonna say that episode of the ashtray was the one that i always say is my first memory of eastenders mm. that's the one that i remember when saski got hit and i was like yeah i'm hooked <laughs> that's me <laughs> that's why i love steve and mel so much yeah because they're like my first they're my first. first. <laughs> first. Um, no, they're both dead. It's funny because you're saying your first memory, but um, anyone who's watching Classic Eastenders on the Drama Channel, mm-hmm. where they Sharon are, Gate. yeah, where they are right now is my first memory. So oh, your first, mm. Sharon and Phil. Mm. Yeah, honestly, this is about the point now where I remember it. I re- I remember it was about when the exposed uh, Phil and Sharon's affair behind Grant's back. So mm. I, I, it, things are flooding. Like every now and then, when I watch a scene, I'm like, I remember that. No, I've seen this. Yeah. But I don't remember it well enough. I was still a wee lad at that mm. point. So, yes, thank you very much, Ben. That's all right. <laughs> it was very half assed this week, but it's fine. Oh, my God, you're sweating. You're, what? You're swearing worse than a, <laughs> a blooming worse sailor. You are. A sailor. <laughs> you are. half assed Crap. <laughs> We're going to get taken off the air. Um, who won the week this week? Four different stories. You vote on Twitter, our Facebook. Callum looking like Instagram. a puppy. Well, there is, well, the first one is Keanu's Ballon Breakdown. Yeah. Which Callum is... did look like a puppy when he's tied up on his knees. He looks like a puppy. <laughs> What's the one from Looney Tunes? Who's like a big basset hound? Droopy. It looks like him. Droopy. <laughs> is it Looney Tunes? I thought that was Hanna Barbera. Oh no, it's, it's a bit like um, Eeyore. He's yeah, always a bit sad. Looks like Callum. You ever knew that was going to happen? Uh, yeah, Droopy. Okay, Droopy. Okay, Keanu's Droopy break. Then there you go. Mm-hmm. That's the first story. Right. The second story is Mick and Linda's split battle. Yeah, that was good. Mm-hmm. Leo's letter be known. Yeah, that was good too. Do you get that? Let it be known. Let it yeah, be known. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Bob and fourth is Bobby's socially awkward. That was good too. They're yeah. all really good. Four good stories. Bobby's um, my favourite character. Is he? What, He's one of my favourite characters. He's like the only one who feels like a real person. Well, I'm going to spoil something for you. Right. He came last. That's Bobby's fine. story was 11%. Can you guess who came third? Leo, because he normally gets low votes. 21% of the vote, third place. They probably voted before the end of Friday's episode, though, where it was like at its peak. Mm-mm. Votes are open from 8.15 for one hour. Yeah. So they've had plenty of time to vote for well, him. that's rubbish then. <laughs> <laughs> So Linda, then Balam, I guess. Spot on. Linda is uh, 32% and Balam, or Droopy, 36% of the <laughs> They vote. didn't deserve to be at the top. It's quite a big story. It's the lead to it's next week. It's a stupid story. They had Keanu. Well, this is the point, isn't it? And the, the, I suppose it made Keanu more sense for others. Keanu, spent a day looking for something for Phil as a joke around houses last year. Oh, I forgot about that. To now kidnapping people. But I said, again, on Twitter, I said, remember when... Uh, Remember when Keanu cried because he didn't get a job after his apprenticeship? <laughs> what a long way we turned. Mm. Like, he's really... Like, this is, a, again, a completely different character. Well, it's the reason Sharon had the affair, because Keanu was a nice, honest, gentle man and feels his horrible pig. And that's why she fell for Keanu in the first place. Now he's turned into a Mitchell. He really has, because Sharon says to him, doesn't she? She says, um, what are you up to? And he says, I don't want to... You know, I yeah, don't need to know. Yeah, job. She, yeah, and she says, well, that's what Phil used to say to me. Mm. So, again, I think the... Uh, the relationship is very strained between them two. He might have the muscles, but he doesn't have the... Uh, doesn't use that anymore either. Doesn't it has hair. It has a lot of hair, doesn't it? Well, it's very thick hair for someone who shaved it all the time. It's like it's like someone's got like a trough full of 
shavings from the barber shop. They put it in like this trough, and Keanu's come along, got a Pritt stick, kind of filled in like his <laughs> face with the Pritt stick around his mouth, and then stuck his face in the trough. Do you not think? No. Like it's, it looks really odd and irregular. His beard. Well, it's meant to look disheveled. But I bet. I, do you think the whole reason the actor quit the show is because he wanted to stop shaving his hair? Because the second he stopped, <laughs> he's grown his hair back straight away. That's a really poor reason. I think they would have given him. They would have been okay for him to grow his hair back if they wanted to keep him, mm. keep him That's in. That's why the guy who played your kill quit, wasn't it? Because it took him like four months to be able to get rid of his top knot, he said. He was really annoyed. What, really? Yeah. I think he, I think he had... When you want to change your hair on these standards, you have to ask for like a four months notice. Well, yeah, because they have to yeah. film scenes. And then like, you have to go missing sure. for like three weeks and then come back into mm. it. I mean, Sharon changes her hair every... Well, she used to change her hair every... what. <laughs> Episode. week yeah every episode <laughs> that was the old days when michelle used to have a perm and then not perm and, then... and also it was only two episodes a week wasn't it yeah. now it's four it's all all confusing anyway we digress here's some comments from this week at ruby k singh says on twitter surely bex is more intelligent than that she has a fetish for pills anyone's actually yeah she does okay colored pills colored pills but undisclosed name yes of course always are <laughs> Uh, at Miss JD on Twitter says, I'm sick of the murders and the kidnapping. Can't the writers think of anything else? Same, it's stupid. Mm. Stupid Kate O's. It's what she did on Corey. It's her thing, isn't it, kidnapping? But you can't really blame Kate O's because John Sen is essentially the. Yeah, but she's in charge of him. She's like, no. Wait, is there I a kidnapping what, I need one story? kidnapping a month <laughs> and two in a car boot. Kate, I've got a story. Is there going to be a kidnapping? <laughs> no. I can I write one in, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, scrap it, scrap it. <laughs> At underscore EastEnders with two S's in the middle underscore. That's not the full name. I'm just explaining how it's written on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if Keanu is now the one who dies, I'll be so mad. Not because I'll miss him, but I need it to be a massive character. So this person on Twitter says that Keanu's not a big enough character to die. No, he's not. We already know he's leaving. Mm. I want it to be someone big, but not someone I like. Max Browning would be the perfect (laughs) um, one. He actually would. Max Browning, eh? Because he's a huge character and... He's got nothing going anyway. He's well, got no storyline, has he? If there's no Julius theme, you might have to eat your hat about Max Branning. That's all I'm going to say. I don't say. want him to have a Julius theme. No, I'm not saying he's going to have a Julius theme, but perhaps that was a suggestion for a forfeit. What, eating a hat? No. Oh. It's a figure of speech. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Shauna Askew says, I've not heard anyone mention Mick's water phobia in a while. I know he tried to get over it and started swimming to raise money for charity, but then he added, ended up in a lake on his wedding day. Maybe the phobia will play a part and stop him from saving Linda, or he'll freak out if the water is coming in and not be very useful in the crisis. Oh yeah, panic attacks, that will come into it. Oh, and the panic attacks, yeah. Ooh, hold his heart. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be able to swim because he's holding his heart. I wouldn't mind if Haggle. Mick died. I like, actually wouldn't miss Mick if he died. <laughs> oh dear. But it would be a big character. So that's that's another one. That would be a huge character. Mm. But have, I also wouldn't care. You have already mentioned that you don't care if Mick dies. <laughs> and I said they wouldn't ever kill Mick. Mick Mick is the golden goose of the soap. No, that's Sharon. No, Sharon is the fans, like the diehard fans, like the campness. <laughs> but for all the ladies out there, it's Danny Dyer. Hence why he gets voted every year in the People's oh, yeah, Choice acting, Awards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in <for> acting. <laughs> Angel- Angelique Kerr, or Carr, I'm ever so sorry if I said your name wrong, said on Facebook, the actress playing Suki is phenomenal, but Suki is totally disgusting with how she's using Jean. I am more upset about finding out Vinny's name is actually Parvinda. They can't have found a more 1950s name. <laughs> I know, why doesn't um, Kirit have like a nickname? Like Jags and Vinny do, mm. but he doesn't. It's because he's like the sensible eldest one. K, call him K. And does Ash, is Ash a nickname for something? Short, longer? Ashley. <laughs> Ashleen. Ashleen. Yeah. I like Suki. She's a great character. Suki's fantastic. More more Suki, please. Mm. So on Twitter and Facebook this week, mm-hmm. I asked a question. Did you? I did. I said, share with us your predictions for the anniversary week of EastEnders, but make them as crazy and over the top as you can. The funniest or most intriguing will be read out on the podcast. I've given loads this week. I've had about 20 on the podcast, haven't I? My theories. Well, you, you have as have I. We've shared our theories. Mm. But let's hear other people's theories. Okay, if we have to. No, they're, they're great. Honestly, some of these are just great. Like you, you guys did not disappoint with your uh, fun and silly theories. So here's just a handful of them. And I'm again, if I don't read yours out, I apologise. I try to read out as many as I can for the show. At Mark and Cookies on Twitter said, while looking for the long missing Baby Abby trademark, he put oh, trademark. Yeah, I forgot about Baby Abby TM. 
A cocoon is discovered that the men have been using to heal themselves quickly. Ben's weekly face bashings, Leo's broken ribs, for example, while Linda's mm-hmm. got a scratch on her forehead for weeks and Chantel's cast since who knows when. So basically, he predicts that they're going to find a cocoon, like in the film Cocoon, mm-hmm. and that it makes all the men youthful and that's how they're <laughs> able to... Makes sense. While looking for Baby Abby trademark. Mm. Speaking of Chantel's cast, that was another theory I had in my many theories. Mm. She's got broken arm. If you fall in water, the cast can't falls swim. Off. Can't swim. You can tread water. Chantel can't. She's you, got a cast on. You can. It's quite easy. She's been too much pain. I've got a certificate. I've got a badge. When I was younger, I could tread water for half an hour. Yeah, Chantel's weak and tired. <laughs> in my pyjamas. If she had a broken rib at the same time. Why would she have a broken rib? Grey. Why would you ever even just break her rib? They're not even on the boat. So it doesn't exactly. So the, and she's, the she's, she's well. sinking her bath <laughs> in bath water. Uh, at Big Gay Adventure on Twitter said, Phil pushes Keanu overboard and the impact of his head on the side of the boat causes him to start sinking. <laughs> ben uses Callum's beanie hat... Halfway's hat Ooh. to fill in the hole, saving everyone on board. Unfortunately, everyone's already jumped into the water because they thought they were sinking. <laughs> oh, I did reply halfway's and said, hat. Well, I got in touch with Halfway's hat and told him about the theory. And um, just to let you know at Big Gay Adventure that Halfway's hat said he can't swim. You can so. plug up a hole, though. Well, then he'd drown. Do you want Halfway's hat? He's already hat? dead. Well, he can't come back as a spirit. Okay, so you can't plug a hole with um, spirit, can you? Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Anyway, Keanu's head's got all that hair now. It's too soft to make a hole in a boat. I've got his shaved head anymore. Hey, do you like to go political? Yeah. Here's one. Boris Johnson thinks that Mick and Linda's booze cruise was full of Brexit supporters and decided to get submarine with a torpedo and blow the boat up, killing everyone on board. Brexit supporters? Hmm. Because he Brexit... Oh, yeah. Why would he kill people who supported him? Maybe they meant the other one. Yeah. Remainers. Remainers. Ramoners. Yeah, sure. That's what they're called. At Lou Flaherty, again, sorry if I said your name wrong, Leo will attack Whitney in tonight's episode and Mick will step in and hit him with something. Maybe a hairdryer. Ah, see, the hairdryer. Then they dispose of the body before heading to the boat party. Mick will then tragically drown in the Thames as he's not a very good swimmer and so the secret dies with him. I mean... That's that... quite close, that to us. Yeah, that could, could happen. happen. The picture's got released for um on the press at 10pm, by the way. Mick is involved with Whitney. I told you. What did I tell you? And Leo. So that could happen, that little theory there. Oh, great. At Queerly Autistic on Twitter said, it was all Ham Man, all of it, every last storyline. And to top it all off, he's going to wreak his ultimate revenge on the citizens of Walford by sinking the boat with his spam powers. <laughs> Especially if he teams up with the pizza delivery guy from last year. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> and take down the square. <laughs> At Kelly Bright's, a fan page for Kelly Bright, I believe, said Linda drunkenly commands the boat and the entire week becomes a dramatic reenactment of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> well, Stuart's dressed up as a pirate, so mm. he dressed up as Hook. At James underscore seven underscore seven underscore seven, Keanu and Phil fight on the boat. Both fall in. Boat crashes into Phil as Sharon screams in labour. People on the boat screaming as they sink. Then Cat and Kush do an under the sea duet whilst Mick, Patrick and then Cat drown. Celine Dion attends the funeral and Linda does an <laughs> expressive dance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great. Poor Patrick, why is he drowning? I don't know. He just Patrick would be an interesting one. He's a kind of big yeah, character. He won a um, Lifetime Achievement thing last year mm. too. So I normally say that's your uh, exit. <laughs> he's a big character. No, because he's got that whole Isaac thing. There's no point in him dying. Okay. That's for the best, perhaps. Max has no storyline coming up, so he could die. So two more from our Facebook page. Kieran Smith says, Linda falls into the depths of the Thames, seconds after declaring her unconditional love for Mick. They end up recovering her cold, lifeless body from the river, cut to Mick looking broken as he has to as he has to go on without his L, then leads to a full-time return for Lee and his girlfriend who take over the pub, possibly a recast for Nancy as well. Ooh, not Johnny. No. Finally, Melissa Cox says there are crocodiles in the Thames after all <laughs> as the citizens of Albert Square discover to their peril the episode becomes a 90 minute creature feature Danny Dyer wrestles a giant squid and then is eaten by a walrus oh Denny is eaten by a walrus oh gosh mm. it'd be like Sharknado mm. <laughs> they should do oh, yes. that <laughs> <laughs> they could have Jedward on that'd be fun mm. no okay uh thank you to everyone who's commented as I say I'm so sorry you couldn't read all of them out, but you can always come to our Twitter and read them for yourself. You can find us on Twitter at Wolford Weekly. You can also find us on our Instagram at Wolford Weekly. We have a Facebook page. Just search Wolford Weekly Podcast and then click to join. And we have an email address. Details are on our website, wolfordweekly.com. Don't forget also that you can rate and maybe give us a good approval on, on Apple Podcasts. Mm. Or a thumbs up or subscribe on YouTube. Absolutely. We're also available on on any other of your favourite podcast apps, including Spotify and Podbean. 
who are also kindly our hosts. Mm. So thank you for everyone yeah, to join us. I can't us. talk, I've got hiccups. Okay, thank you for everyone who's <laughs> joined us. Um, it's, yet again, it's always great to know that you're enjoying the show. Please don't be afraid to get in touch. Hope you all have a great week. and uh, Look forward to Boat Week. Yeah, look forward to next week. Keep tuned in.